What is going on everybody? I found this footage on my computer that um, apparently I intended to make a video with and just forgot. So it's a scorpion razor. I've made a couple of these are really cool. Um, Damascus steel carved to look like a scorpion tail for the tail of the razor and some flare on the back end of it, which anyone who's, yeah, you know, you know how I do it. If you don't think outside the box, I guess. Like it's not, it's not gold plating, I can tell you that. It's not electro plating. Uh, something that's far more durable than that. A little riddle for you, um, figure that out. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the video right now. All right, so any razor I make starts out with a bar of steel and I cut it out with the angle grinder. I don't happen to have a hydro cutter, I don't have a plasma cutter, I don't have a bandsaw that can cut metal. So here we are using the trusty, tried and true, useful angle grinder. It's pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Just make sure you use the right steel thickness for the width of razor that you're going for. With knives, this isn't nearly as relevant, but for straight razors, it is. I'll put a link in the description to talk about more in depth about geometry of razors. So I tried to get a bunch of different angles for you guys apparently. So this is past me, this is current me talking about past me shooting. So um, yeah, got a bunch of angles. I sped up this time here for you to show you just what I'm doing with this now rectangular piece of steel. I'm gonna basically draw the razor onto it. Now I have this razor drawn already in a sketchbook. I have an idea of what I wanna do. I know the dimensions, I can measure it in the book and take it over. I recommend doing this, just especially if you're gonna replicate something more than once you're definitely gonna want some sort of template. You could make a wooden template, you could make a metal template, or you could do like I do and just use a piece of paper to draw. It works well for me, it might not work for you. I hope it does, but yeah. So you can see me using the tools I have, Sharpies, just basic stuff that a lot of people already have around. And none of this stuff really is expensive to use, to own, so this, this part of the process is relatively cheap. All music in this video is done by Sky Chief. I'll put a link to this epic punk rock in the description. All right, now it's a lot easier and cheaper to use your angle grinder to cut out the majority of the metal. You could do this with your belt grinder or belt sander, whatever you want to call it. I always just call it the grinder, but it, you could do this with that. It's just a little bit more expensive because typically the belts run about a dollar, dollar fifty, depending on what kind you use and go up to ten dollars a piece. But uh, the discs are almost fifty cents a piece and you can get a lot more out of them. So using cut off discs is definitely a way to go. Uh, pardon my dirty, uh, my dirty hands of being in the shop, but uh, yeah, you can see how much quicker it is. I'm getting a lot of the metal cut out that way. And uh, yeah, just use the, use the tools you got to do the work you can quickly and efficiently. And obviously quality is important too, but at this point, just cut metal out. So, yep, doing the best I can. At this point, we've cut it out. We're gonna use our flat platen on whatever uh, sander you have and cut anything that isn't the razor away. So this is gonna be the two-dimensional shape that you have in your sketchbooks, drawings, whatever, uh, templates. Just get it to that 2D shape. And this could be done pretty quickly. You can use quite a bit of pressure here to just get this thing done. And uh, yeah, so I'll give you a couple different shots of what that looks like. Kind of see, see how I do it. Note here that I'm drilling the pivot hole before I have done any bevel making or anything like that. The steel is still soft. It's not a dangerous piece of metal yet. 
And um, yeah, I re definitely recommend doing all of your drilling in soft steel before you do your bevels. It'll, it'll save you from potential bad times that I have experienced. Also, if you're gonna leave a comment now about how I should clamp the metal and do all this stuff, calm yourself real quick. That is a 1 16th inch drill bit and it will break long before it pulls the metal. Okay. On another note, I like to start all of my bevels off this way. Uh, not everybody does this, it's different. I understand if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. Uh, to give it a shot or don't, whatever works. This is how I do all of my preheat treat grinding, my bevel setting, as you guys, I don't know if it's bevel setting. Preheat treat grinding is done with a piece of angle iron and, and I just set it to, yeah, you can kind of see right there. I kind of set it in there so that I can quickly get that grind done. Uh, there's really no point in fussing over making this grind perfect. If it's super bad, you're definitely going to want to clean it up. This takes a lot of practice and trial and error. So you can see once I get it done, I just keep it cool. I flip it over, bam, clamp it back in on the other side. And there you go. Wham, bam, quick and dirty. Get that thing done and move on to the next step. For this particular razor, that's going to be carving. But you'll just have to watch and see. All right, back to the drill press. This is pretty simple, pretty standard procedure for if you're gonna carve anything. You wanna use the quickest, cheapest tools you can to remove the metal. Same as when I used the angle grinder instead of the belt sander before. This piece you can see from the sketch on the blade itself is actually gonna be the tip of the scorpion tail here. So uh, that's not, that's all gonna get carved out. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill it out. Easy, a lot easier. Uh, selection of tools, just general bits for carving. I used a Grizzly rotary tool. It has a foot speed controller. Since this video was shot, I've actually changed my setup to a pneumatic one, so I use an air compressor and air tools. Um, I like both. I like the air tools because it's easier to replace. Oops, sorry about that. I dropped you apparently. Pass, Jacob. What are you doing, man? Get your stuff together. So there's a lot of different ways to, to carve, and um, this is just the way that I like. It works for me. I definitely recommend using eye protection. I have had a piece of metal go in my eye and had to get it removed a couple of days later. It, they don't come out. They go in and they burn into your eye. You don't feel them. You just feel like something's in your eye for a couple of days and then your eye starts getting really bad and red. And a uh, really simple solution to this is to wear eye protection. I don't recommend wearing like safety goggles because you can see here I'm wearing pretty cool ones. but. Safety goggles don't really work because these little pieces go flying and they go up and they hit your cheek and they go in, they go up and they fly everywhere. So what I did and what you just saw is I used motocross glasses and they're really cheap to get on the internet. You probably get them pretty cheap anywhere. Uh, snowboarding goggles, really anything without a tint. And what I did is I just, I bought the cheapest ones I could so their ventilation was bad and they would fog up on me. Simple fix was just drill some holes in the sides and now they work really well. They're, they're, they're pretty dust proof, so you don't really have to worry about the stuff getting in there. They, they touch your skin on either side. So definitely motocross glasses are a recommendation. Safety glasses are a must for this. Carving takes time, and I don't show the whole process, obviously, but um, really my number one tip for anyone trying to get into carving steel is have patience. Understand that carving anything takes practice and just try a bunch of different ways like try it on your Try test it before you put it on your finished product. See if it looks good Definitely you can see that you can see that the stuff like goes right up in your face too Here's a not finished product. I have one more step to do which is super top secret <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is it is kind of secret, but uh, you you probably figure out what it is Anyways, heat treating is pretty straightforward. I follow the spec sheets on any of the metal I get. I don't really buy, I don't really use found steel. I buy all my steel uh, from manufacturers. It's just easier that way. You don't have to worry about cracking. So this particular Damascus steel is 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Quench in oil and uh, pull it out. Uh, 
so got to get it to room temperature within a certain frame time frame that's actually a different blade I realize I didn't have footage of the scorpion being quenched or final brown so here that quench and this right here are of another blade the thing is, and the reason I'm not too ashamed to, to tell you this, is that this process is the same for all razors. So keep it cool, uh, do, do your quench according to your spec sheet, and when you're doing your final grind, this is, this is a thing that only straight razor makers really have to do. We have to come through and grind it without overheating it. So when you're doing your final grind, getting it thin, putting, making it a straight razor, uh, you want to do it by hand. You, you can't really do this any other way because you can't judge the temperature. So my fingers are actually telling me, okay, the blade's getting hot, I need to put it in water. And you can see how often I go from grinding to checking my work to water. Grind, check, work, water. Grind, check, work, water. It's a pretty repetitive thing. It's definitely the most important part of the process and you should 100% take your time with it. And don't get frustrated, it takes a while to learn this process. All right, so this should go without saying, but Damascus steel is just regular steel until you drop your phone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, anyways, Damascus steel is just, it's two different types of steel welded together with uh, high heat and hammers. It's pretty awesome. You guys should check some videos on that from YouTube on that. Anyways, that's pattern welded steel, and I use ferric chloride and water to do my etching. That's pretty much how you get to see the cool patterns. Uh, really important to dry it. This isn't exactly the best way to do it. You can use alcohol or oil or whatever. Just make sure you dry it off because this is high carbon steel and it tends to rust. So yeah, once you get the pattern you want, get it dry and start working on scales. On this scorpion blade, the customer chose to go with a hybrid wood between it was an olive wood, wood, and a, a, a red pigment inside. I also will eventually make the decision and go with a liner for the scales because the the red was a little clear, and I thought it'd be cool to implement a liner. The liner in this case will be carbon fiber. It looks really cool in the finished product. If you're curious how I do make my scales, I actually have a video on that. And yeah, of course, as always, link in the video description. But it's a pretty simple process that I'm, I'm happy to have sorted out. Essentially, I cut the piece of scale out to double the size of what I want. And then I drill the holes uh, to get the pivot and the wedge. And I cut it in half again. So I take one thick piece of wood or material I drill my holes and then I turn that into two pieces and it makes for really well lined up holes and a really cool book bookend look and I do this on everything it's just the easiest way for me to do it so you can see here I'm just drawing on this rectangular piece of wood very similar to the way we did the metal and then from here I'll grind it to be the shape that we need or cut it so either way
Little pro tip here, if you're gonna be working with G10 fiberglass or carbon fiber or Kevlar, any sort of fiber in resin thing that's super strong, use hand tools with cheap blades, not necessarily cheap, but cheaper than your bandsaw blades because they tend to dull your materials. So carbon fiber, using my handsaw to avoid dulling my bandsaw blade. And we're done. Whenever you do liners, it's really important to sand both sides of the material. Duh, the two-part epoxy uh, is definitely a mechanical bond, so the more sanded and clean you can make it, the stronger that bond is going to be, and this stuff will stay forever. This two-part epoxy is fantastic. So you can see I clamped it down really tight, I'm now taking it out of the vise, and I'm going to cut it out and start shaping it. Pretty simple stuff, same thing, same thing you do for knives, and if you have any practice there, you'll know what I'm doing here just adding that liner to it. So it's the only time I'll use glue on a straight razor of any kind. All right, so now we have our bookended lined pieces of scale, left, right, front, back, whatever you want to call it. We have two of them, so pretty cool, right? Essentially now it's time to start hand sanding them and get them to that nice shine. It's pretty straightforward stuff. I use just sandpaper and water. I usually start with about 220, work my way up all the way through to 2000, 4000. Whatever I happen to have on hand, I'll go as high as I possibly can. I don't really like doing this by the machine. It just doesn't ever come out as nice. It's not that it, you can't do it. I'm sure there are ways to use your machine to polish these, but I, don't, I have bad luck with it, so I just do it by hand. It seems to be a little bit easier for me. Alright, so scales are just about done here, it looks like. And uh, yep, so we'll let them dry, and then I'll actually use a buffing wheel to polish them up the rest of the way. And Current J is mad at past Jacob right now because I don't have footage of this particular razor when it was finished. So you'll have to apologize. I'm gonna post up pictures of another similar scorpion razor you can tell it's different it's made before this one the scales are different i'm sorry guys i really missed screwed the pooch on this one well that's it uh scorpion razor kind of start to finish i did mess up a lot on the videos i'm sorry like i said i found this this footage and thought i'd throw together a quick video for you guys and then i realized this isn't actually quick it's like kind of long so took me a while to make it took me less time to watch it so if you guys enjoyed the video do all the things that youtubers tell you to do but most importantly i want to say to leave a comment because encouragement will help me film more and tell me what you think about this like voice overlay video format because it is the easiest way and the most probable way i'll be putting out my videos in the future i have a couple more coming up um 
and I'm going to start filming more so that you guys can actually enjoy more of the process. Anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Maybe. Just saying. Let me know if you want to see more. Bye, guys. Oh, yeah. You probably know this, or maybe you don't, but Jacob Ray Razors. Jacob, R-A-Y, Razors.com, Instagram, Facebook, all over the place. Check me out. I'll see you around.